Hi, I'm Chin Liu. And I'm Sal, and this is Our Next Make. The snow has finally started to fall in New England. And we're both super excited to make something we haven't made in years. Paper, Paper snowflakes. snowflakes. So I'll link in our description a video showing you how to fold these little triangles. But basically all you need is a sheet of printer paper. And a pair of scissors. A pair of scissors. Yeah. Let's, let's go have some fun. First, you slowly open it up. Make sure you plan it. Yes, as you open up so the creases can all be evened out. Now it's like half of it. And when you open it up, all the way, I can't do it. It's all stuck together. Look at that. Wow. Yeah. So make sure. Get to enjoy this. Stick it on your refrigerator or put it on, hang it up on the ceiling like we have. You know what's up? What's up? This gave me an idea. I think I have an idea for another project. You know, I was thinking the same thing. I have another idea for another project. All right. Should we meet up in a bit? Okay. We'll see you in a minute. My idea is to make one of these paper snowflakes out of wood. So first, I placed it into this book just to flatten it out a little bit. Now I can use a glue stick to glue it to this piece of quarter inch cherry plywood. Once it's glued in place, we're almost ready to cut it out, but first we have to head into the shop to make one small project. Before you start any project, please take the time to understand how to safely use your tools and be sure to protect yourself from injury. Keep your loose clothing and long hair away from your power tools. When appropriate, wear hearing protection or a dust mask. And most importantly, always wear safety glasses. We're going to build a coping saw cutting table. Here I found a scrap piece of plywood from another project and I'm drawing lines to cut away the waste and then I'm laying out for, for a bird's mouth or a V notch. This will be where our coping saw goes. Using a jigsaw I can quickly cut away the waste material and then cut out that V notch. Now we can go back inside, clamp this to our table and start using our coping saw. Now coping saw blades come in a wide variety of styles. If you use a coarse blade, you'll be able to move more quickly through the material, but it will leave a, a rough cut. A fine blade, of course, will go a little more slowly, but it produces a nicer cut. So you do have to decide what's best for your application. I actually ended up using both in this case. Working your way around the outside, you can remove the material, but to remove material on the inside, you have to drill at least one hole. Here I'm drilling all six because I can have a nice round corner in all six parts of the hexagon. But then you can thread your coping saw blades through one of the holes, reattach it to the handle, and then cope on the inside just like you did on the outside. Once it's removed, you simply reverse the process, take the blade back off, and then we can turn our attention to removing the paper from the front. Because we used a glue stick, it comes off very nicely. Now, now we can just use a rasp in this case to smooth out some of the, uh, the rough edges that we're not happy with. But it's okay, it's not try we're not trying to be perfect here because ultimately it's going to be painted. As you can see, I'm taping off with blue painter's tape and then just hitting it with some black spray paint. Once that's dried, we can remove the blue painter's tape for a nice reveal. And you'll see it looks really great, the black spray paint in contrast with that nice cherry wood. Um, it came out really nicely. Here I'm gonna grab one of the photos I have available from an old Christmas card that we had and uh, just cut it down to size. So I'm cutting it into a rough hexagon shape and taping it in place with small pieces of blue painter's tape. That came out really nicely. I think Chinlu's gonna really love it. So I'm excited about trying to make a snowflake in Salawar's Ask for Kids. I'm going to start out with a little squish ball and flatten the top and bottom so that I know it can maybe sit on a 3D printer nicely. Um, let me turn on some mirror sides so that I can actually make my shape and have it symmetrical uh, in four different directions. And as I work on these, I think it looks a little too blockish, but I, no worries. I think I'm going to be able to round it off 
right now if I just turn it back to smooth. Yes, now it's rounded on one side and flat on the other. I'm going to take some time and smooth out the shapes, give the little spikes a little bit more character and squish it around. Once I'm done, let's go and style it up. Make it look like a snowflake. I'm going to maybe change the background to a dark blue, change the snowflake to white. Now it looks like a snowflake. Let's see if we can print it, 3D print it. From Ask for Kids, I've connected it to a Sindo 3D printer. So let's send it out. It first creates a raft to put the 3D piece on top. And when it comes out, you can pop the piece right off. Wow, Sal, this turned out amazing. How did you feel about doing all of these little bits, decoration all by hand? You know, it was fun. But it was also tedious. Uh, I, I understand why they invented the scroll saw. And we may have to purchase one of those. Yeah, I mean, it's it's very beautiful, very intricate. I'm just really excited that you got to use some of our old um, Christmas cards that would otherwise have been thrown out. So I, and I look forward to replacing this every year with uh, new pictures. This is a pretty old one. Our kids aren't that young anymore. I also like that I was able to use just a scrap piece of, of uh, plywood that we had laying around. So that's always nice to find a piece that, that suits the purpose. Yeah, but this was an off cut, cut from a, another piece, right? Yeah, absolutely. And this uh, this chimney, this was this is remarkable. Uh, you know, number one, you proved that apps for kids is not just for kids. Um, you can make something delicate, intricate, um, and, and really, really quite gorgeous. And I can't wait to put this on our tree next year. Wow, big great ornament. Yeah. So, are you up for another project? One more project? One more on this theme, What'd this wintry theme. What'd you have in mind? So I have these that we were about to store away and I think I have an idea on how we could use it and let it stay out for a little longer before we store it away. All right. I'm going to try to show you how, what I mean in X Design. Let's head over there. So a snowflake has six legs and on each leg is a mirrored pattern. So I'm going to take that pattern that I want and make it into a sketch in X-Design. Now I can give it a thickness. And when I extrude, I'm going to use 3 quarter of an inch. That's the thickness of the wood we will be using for the decoration. I'm going to mirror this half design into a full leg. That looks great. Now let's try to make a circular pattern so I can put six sides to this to look like a snowflake. I'm going to have Sal cut this out of wood. With the design complete, I can grab a DXF file from Xdesign and take that over to my CNC. I'm screwing down a sheet of half inch MDO, which is medium density overlay. This is a great plywood for exterior use. On one side, it has a very thin veneer of medium density fiberboard, and it takes paint really well and holds up well to the elements also. With the CNC complete, I can now turn my attention to rounding over some of the edges and then starting to make the standoffs that will hold the snowflake away from the wall. I just grabbed a couple pieces of scrap 2x4. I'm using this plastic jig to find the centers of the square, but you can also find the centers by connecting the diagonals using a ruler, as you can see me doing here. Now we'll chuck this up into the lathe, and we'll turn this into a cylinder. Anytime you set things up in the lathe, just of course give it a quick turn to make sure it doesn't interfere with your tool rest, and then you can turn the machine on and start turning. You'll notice I'm using a roughing gouge here and this thing is in desperate need of a sharpen, but we're not going for anything particularly fancy here. In fact, um, a close enough cylinder is what we're going for because I just want to make sure I have something round that will fit into the holes that I recessed on the back of that snowflake. A little bit of sandpaper and using some of the sawdust as sanding as well produces a reasonably good result. Now I'm going to cut this down into smaller pieces. Over at the miter station, we can cut these down to length. You can see I'm using a stop block and I'm keeping my hands well away from the blade because these pieces are so very small. Now back inside we can glue these things into their appropriate pockets and using whatever we have on hand as a little bit of weight to hold them down while the glue sets up. Remember, do the best you can with what you have where you are. Flipping it over we can now turn our attention to paint. I'm using an exterior grade latex paint and rolling it on to the broad surfaces and using a brush to get into the smaller spaces. I made a small cleat and attached it to the wall. Now we can hang up the snowflake, and take a step back, and admire what we've made.
watching them. That was really fun. Yes, I had fun getting inspired by snow and making all those snowflake projects. Yeah, it was really cool to start with simple paper craft and work all the way up to building something on the CNC. I love the variety of the projects that we just created. Yeah, and they turned out great. So if you also got inspired by making your own projects, please share it with us. And until then, we'll see you on our next make.